G'day, my name is John Steele from the University of New South Wales. This is another in my little series of videos on complex analysis. What I want to look at in this video is mappings. How do we picture a function of a complex variable? Well, we can't draw a graph like we would do for a function of a real variable because we don't have enough dimensions. We'd need four dimensions, we've only got three. So what we do is something a little bit more primitive, which is why we often refer to these things as mappings. What we do is we take some region of the complex plane, we apply the function to every point in the region, and we get another region in the complex plane, and this change of shape gives us some idea of how the function behaves. Well, before I look at actual, an actual example, let me just stress some terminology. We let z, the really imaginary parts x and y, so z is x plus i y, be the uh, version of the complex plane we begin from, and w, really imaginary parts u and v, w is u plus iv, be the version of the complex plane we end at. And we'll say w is f of z, so this is telling us how the z plane right, is transformed into the w plane. And it's how these shapes alter that give us some picture of how the function behaves. So, this is a typical sort of problem. We're asked to find and sketch the image of the region mod z minus 2 strictly less than 1 under the mapping w is 2 over z minus 1. Well, mod z minus 2 less than 1 is set of all points that are within 1 of the point z equals 2. So that's the inside of a circle, well, a disk, not including the boundary because I've got a strict inequality here. And as is typical, I'm using dashed lines to show that the boundary is not included. So the question is, how do we do this? Well, there are really two options you've got. You could basically do it forwards or you could do it backwards. In this case, backwards is easier. Uh, I'll explain what I mean by that later on. Uh, but even within those two ideas, you've got two different options here. We could look at just what happens to the boundary of the region, take the circle, right, mod z minus 2 equals 1, and see what we get over here, and then work out which part of the complex plane the inside goes to. But with this backwards method, I can, in fact, uh, do the whole thing directly. So let me see, show you what we do. The first thing we'll do is rewrite our function as uh, a function of w. So we're going to solve that equation for z. So we have, while well, cross-multiplying, we see we get z minus 1 is equal to 2 over w. So z is 2 over w uh, plus 1. What we then do is we take that expression for z as a function of w and just put it in to the restriction. So mod z minus 2 less than 1 maps to w over 2 minus 1, strictly less than 1. And then what we do is we rearrange this into something we can actually make sense of. Well, putting everything over a common denominator, 2 minus w over w is strictly less than 1, but that is the same thing as the modulus of 2 minus w is strictly less than the modulus of w. We can either do algebra or we can do some geometry to get the answer out. And the geometry, in fact, gets the answer out very quickly. If you remember what the absolute value means, it means a distance. Mod w is a distance of w from the origin. 2 minus w is a distance of w from the point 2. So what this is saying is you want all those points in the w plane that are closer to 2 than they are to zero. Well, the sort of all points that are the same distance from two and from zero is the, is the line that bisects uh, zero and two. In other words, it's the vertical line through u equals one. And since we're to be close to two, we must have, in fact, the right-hand half plane. So we're going to get u strictly bigger than one at the end. And that would be a perfectly reasonable argument to give. But we can do it algebraically, if that's what you'd rather do, 
what we do is we square both sides of this and that's perfectly legitimate because both sides are positive and then we rewrite w as u plus iv and see what we get. So squaring both sides and then putting in for uh, w as u plus iv. Well mod w squared of course is just u squared plus v squared 2 minus w all squared, well the real part of 2 minus w is 2 minus u, or u minus, we're going to square it so it might as well be u minus 2 all squared. The imaginary part is still v, so plus v squared. So we've got u minus 2 all squared plus v squared less than u squared plus v squared. Square this out and then cancel off everything that can be cancelled. This is going to be u squared, which cancels the u squared over here minus 4u plus 4. The v squared cancels with the v squared on the other side. So that's minus 4u plus 4 equals 0. But that, of course, is, as promised, u bigger than 1. So now we can sketch our region. u equals 1, well, we'll put it about here. And it's everything on that side. Now, I mentioned we could have done this by looking at the uh, edge, and we could have done that. If you think about it, all we need to do is, rather than write inequalities here we could have written equalities I'd have ended up with u equals 1 so that would have told me what the edge of the region I'd been mapped to is and then I've got to decide well is it the left hand plane or the right hand half plane well, the simplest way of telling that is to just imagine what happens to some given point and the obvious point to pick in this example is z equals 2 the center of the circle under w is 2 over z minus 1 z equals 2 gets mapped to w equals 2 so as the centre of circle goes to here, the whole inside of the circle must get mapped to that side of u equals 1, in other words, to the right-hand half. So that's how to do the certain problem in a way backwards, solving for uh, z as a function of w. As I mentioned earlier, we can do it forwards as well. And there are certain problems of this type that you really have to do forwards, in a sense, rather than backwards. What I mean by doing it forwards is we parameterize in this case, the edge of the region. We look at what happens to that, and then we do the same trick that I just mentioned about seeing what happens to a certain point, the point z equals 2 here, say. So what we want to do is parameterize that circle, and then just put that formula, that function, into uh, z over 2 over z minus 1, and then try and make sense of what we get out at the end. All right, so parameterize the edge. edge of the region is given by z is, well the centre is at 2 and it's radius at 1, so 2 plus e to the i theta for, well, theta is to vary over some region of length 2 pi and for reasons that become apparent when I get to the end, I'm going to pick minus pi to pi. All right. So now what we want to do is to put this parameterization of the edge of the region into the formula for W. So this is mapped to W is what's going to be 2 over Z minus 1 is 1 plus E to the I theta. And our problem then is to work out exactly what this looks like in the W plane. What sort of curve is this? Well, the standard way of doing this would be, of course, to make the denominator real by multiplying by the conjugate. And you could do that, but you'll be end up with a, a fair bit of work to do with some trigonometric identities. There's a nice little trick here that uh, is quite useful in complex analysis, and it's a variant of mathematicians' favourite trick number one, multiplying by one but a clever version of the number one. And the clever version of the number one we choose here 
is e to the minus i theta upon 2 divided by e to the minus i theta upon 2. Right. When we multiply that all out, the numerator is then 2. Well, let's write out the e to the i theta part twice. Cos theta upon 2 plus i times sine theta upon 2. And what's the denominator? Well, it's going to be e to the i theta upon 2 plus e to the minus i theta upon 2. But that, you should remember, is just twice the cosine of theta upon 2. So the denominator, we've actually made the denominator real by this trick. It's twice cos theta upon 2. So we've got twice cos theta upon 2 over cos theta upon 2 for the real part, well, that's just going to be 1. So we can immediately see this is 1. So that's the real part as we expected. And then the imaginary part is sine theta upon 2 over, remember, it's uh, cos theta upon 2. is going to be plus i times tan theta upon 2. And now we see why I used minus pi to pi uh, as the um, definition uh, interval for theta, because as theta varies from minus pi to pi, which would be like going round the edge of the disk, tan theta upon 2 will vary from minus infinity to infinity, so it'll take us from the bottom, right, infinitely far down this line, up to the top. So this will, in fact, give us the entire line u equals 1. And then all we have to decide is, is it the left or the right-hand half plane? And it's the same trick we saw before. What happens is z equals 2? z equals 2 was mapped to w equals 2, but that, of course, is on the right. So if that's what happens to the edge, the interior of the disk must get mapped to the right-hand half plane, u bigger than 1, exactly as we found before. Thank you.